yeah, you just got to have a heart. It's heart. It's Kim is going to welcome to Edge Protocol Live, where every week we take about 15 or 20 minutes and we share real teachers that are really using Edge Protocols in real classrooms and why they like it. And the way we start the show off, uh, because Kim and I are both classroom teachers, uh, we start off with Kim has a little segment called Keeping It Real. Yeah, we are keeping it real. Um, so I uh, don't. I am in Southern California, and uh, we have Ooh. the most recent California fire going right now um, in my school district. So the Blue Ridge fire is impacting students and families and teachers in my district. And uh, we had the same event happen in like 2008, where it was very scary and very real. Um, and and our students lost homes and and mm -hmm. and it was just uh, not a good time. And so all those memories are kind of coming back. And one of the things I did uh, in 2008 was literally called every single kid down my roster and wow. spent the day doing that. And um, this year I have 60 students on my roster between basically two periods of kind of that middle school idea of diff of uh, departmentalizing. And so. And, and my kids now are across the district. They aren't just in one central area. Right. I don't necessarily have as many kids impacted at this point. So what I did instead of calling each one of them is sent out a Google form and said, please check in with me. And I gave them the choices of, uh, and they could add in what happened. So some of them evacuated voluntarily, some of them for health reasons and all this, and most of them are fine. And I've heard from about two thirds of my families. And the nice emails I got back from the families were like, I hope you're okay too, because I'm out by another fire um, and not on my side of the freeway. Thank goodness this time. And just like, thank you. And the appreciative feeling of, you know, my teacher cares about me. And then the kids checking in with each other in the Google classroom. So mm -hmm. um, when we talk about a family and a community in mm -hmm. our classroom, mm -hmm. this is what it's all about, especially when we come to times of need. So I'm not trying to bring it down or anything, but mm -hmm. Um, keeping your families connected is really, really important. And the kids yeah. know you care. The first part of our job is educating the whole human child, not the academic part of the child. And if you're not sure, um, you know, so there's some good, pretty good evidence on that. If you ever Google um, what percent of millionaires are valedictorians, um, <laughs> they're not all, all millionaires are not valedictorians, right? And so I think that modeling of empathy, that modeling of community is far more critical than, uh, I can't talk to you guys because I'm busy lesson planning for tomorrow after the fire. And um, I watch the same kind of thing. We live near the Creek Fire up here, which is, uh, unfortunately, we hold the record for the largest single fire in California history now. And, um, you know, I watched my wife model it and her teachers, they were out there. There were teachers that were visiting kids in displaced hotels from Visalia to Merced. Wow. And they were literally driving their cars and bringing kids textbooks and food and fresh socks and things like that. So yeah. what a, what a great, uh, keeping it real segment to keep yeah. us real right off the get go. For sure. Alrighty, so now we get to bring in our first guest for today, and I'm super Yay. excited. Yeah, our first guest is uh, Brianna Davis, and we had a very uh, energetic meeting at at, a, at a, an event at in Roxnard. Like I remember, I would, knowing oh, her, and knowing you, I can't imagine anything less. Oh yeah, she was in the back keeping me real. She was like, "I don't know if that works," and I was like, "Well, let me give you five examples." She's like. Okay, I'll try it. <laughs> so that was like, it was like super cool. And she had a couple of friends in there. So everybody welcome Brianna Davis. She's going to be sharing the great American race today, which is, uh, if you saw the description, it, I, I, and you tell me if I'm wrong, Brianna. I, like, I'm one of the great grandpappies of Edge of Protocols. I think great American race is one of the most sophisticated. I don't like to say complicated because complicated can have a negative connotation. But on the teacher side and the work that the students are doing, I think is one of the most sophisticated of all the protocols. What, what's your thought about um, that? Sophisticated is a great word. I would also use the word organized mm -hmm. because there's a lot of work on my end to get it set up so that it works. And I finally mastered how to do it uh, in breakout rooms, distance learning style, which mm. I didn't do at all in the spring. And so it has definitely put me back into the groove to which I was more accustomed to. 
Well, that's for awesome. Sure, Can you sure, give for us sure. a, for people that have not heard of the great American race, because fast and curious, everybody's seen that sketch and tell thin slides, but great American race doesn't get as much traffic. Can you give us a run through of like what the pieces of that lesson look like? What's that? What that look like? Yes. To build? Okay. So first off, I have to come up with like a topic. I typically use the great American race as an intro. Um, I know people who also use it as like a study guide at the end of a unit, but just today I started in AP US history, um, the 1800s. So I came up with, that was the make the big topic. And then each student was actually assigned a subtopic. So there was a, um, yes. Uh, Sorry, my daughter. Like we were saying, that's okay. Kim was just talking about human kids um, matter. Over there, I I don't. <laughs> kids are a thing. Uh, so I give every kid um, a topic within the major umbrella topic of, let's say, the 1800s, mm -hmm. um, and I email that to them. So I actually mm -hmm. teach high school, so I can schedule send all of my emails to go Ooh. out at exactly the right that's time. That's a that's a fun trick too game, because that's game show right. Game. 801, it's on. Yes. I'm like, check your email. I didn't get it. Check again. I sent it at 11.15, exactly. Um, and so I have every kid get their own topic. Um, sometimes if it's a really large class, here's my other game changer is uh, I do it by group so that there's not like 42 slides. Let's cut that down to 26 because yeah. it's a lot more manageable. Or, or like 12 um, per group, right? Uh, I do like three to four because okay. I have like 38 kids in a class. So the groups of four. So each kid yeah. gets one well, slide. The slides, the slides, oh, yeah. what the kids are getting for comprehensible in input is, and this is one of those edge protocols. Instead of you barfing 48 slides at them, each group only needs to digest seven or eight slides, but they go deep, right? Yes. Yes. And so they have their topic. And they have to build a slide with clues. They're not allowed to give the answer. They're not allowed to, um, they have to kind of get us to think about it. And it's almost like, a, I think of it as a reverse scavenger hunt mm -hmm. where I'm given this information just enough and maybe a little bit more than I could bargain for. Um, sometimes they like to get super creative if it's a person uh, they make it like, I was born in 1842. I served as the 36th president. Of, you know, So they get very like personal. Um, they add an image and uh, then they, so once all the slides are done and I have a complete deck. So typically today's deck was only 20 slides because that's how many kids are in my AP class. I don't necessarily need to publish that to the world. You just did. <laughs> I know. Um, and once they once the slide deck is done, then I send them into breakout rooms uh, where they work in a group of four to try and figure out all 20 slides. And that's where there's a Google form involved. Mm. Um, and I have to create that Google form, but I set the answer key so Google grades it and I don't actually have to do as much work, I just double check their answers because spelling Andrew Jackson is sometimes a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> or Marbury versus Madison isn't Ooh. always, you know, that, a little that tricky. That versus thing you, can throw you off, yeah. Yes, when you spell Supreme Court cases. Um, I experimented a few weeks ago using the Google, uh, Google form multiple choice grid. And that was uh, a very confusing one because there were 26 slides and to go 26 slides down and 26 slides across, uh, I got confused. Yeah. And I left off three answers because I was like, I don't know, I don't know what the answer is. No, I did, but I have a master in Google, uh, in Google spreadsheets and Google Sheets where I have the slide number, the topic, and then who I assigned it to. So that's kind of my organizational flow where I already have everything ready to go. Um, I have a blank slide deck. I always do a sample slide. My slides include directions in the event mm -hmm. that they weren't paying attention the first three times. Um, your I, kids, what's up with your kids? <laughs> well, they're juniors and seniors in high school. They don't always <laughs> listen to me. Um, and then they today I added the extra element of we did it in Pear Deck too. So we had a Pear Deck website slide 
and they didn't have to leave me at all because sometimes they leave and they don't come back. So they were with me. We were all together. We were talking. It was actually kind of nice uh, because sometimes I just say go and then I watch them and then they're like, is she watching? And always, <laughs> I'm always watching always. guys, always. <laughs> I'm in like 10 breakout rooms at the same time. Are you ready? Um, and so then we have a Google form and the race is the group with the most correct answers and the fastest to finish. And so now I've even added prizes and that has been so fun. Like they get to spin the random flippity wheel um, and sometimes they get pocket constitutions because I am that person or they get stickers in the mail because who doesn't love free stickers? Oh, that's awesome. Um, or they get a free pass. And so now the the competition amongst juniors and seniors to like spin that wheel is, is crazy that's, insane. Cause fierce. they are like, <laughs> wait, we can win prizes? Yes, yes you can. So, so let me do a recap because I'm loving all the detail. These are the things that make it work versus make it funky, right? So yes. basically, you have the kids do a version of like an Iron Chef where every kid makes a slide within their group. And yeah. then there's a Google form and they have not seen the other groups. And in the Google form, you have like scavenger hunt questions. So they've got to look through what is now 50 or 60 slides, even though they only worked on six or eight. And they're going to find those answers for the scavenger hunt from the slides the kids made themselves and then pump that into the Google form. Is that sounding about right? Um, yes and no. So I, I would typically have a kid only do one slide. So there's a total of like 38 right. slides, but they, they're not watching everybody else at the same time. So they're right. so busy working on their one slide. And then when they get to their group of four, they've already got four out of, yep. you know, 40 answers. Yes. Yep. Um, but they do have to solve all of them. They don't just get to say, oh, well, I'm only going to do half today. Um, oh no, the, the race is on to see who can get all 40 slides. Well, yeah, <laughs> on a good day, all 40 slides answered correctly. Spelling counts in my world. All right. And then speaking of slides, you have some slides for us. Do you want me to put those up now? I, so you kind of walk us through like now that we've got the overview. So I'm, I'm going to try to do this again. Cause like I said, it's one of the most sophisticated <laughs> So basically each kid makes one slide kind of in an Iron Chef style. There's questions, put pictures, blah, blah, blah. Yes. That Then the group of kids has four slides that they know because, dude, they made them. Mm -hmm. Then there might be 38 slides in the massive one that you put all together. And then from there, there's Google form where kids put all their answers in. And you might have one or two questions that are coming from the slides that they're pumping into the Google form. And then you're watching that on the spreadsheet. Yes. Okay, yes, so yes, that's yes. the general flow. So I'm going to put up your slide now. And now you can jump into some like specifics. Like I see you've got the female suffrage edition. Okay, so yes, this is kind of where I had to create a template to make life make sense for me. Um, and once I had a template, then I can do is just change the topic mm -hmm. here at the bottom. Um, and so I give the directions. This is where, again, if they're not, like if they weren't there that day or they forgot how to do this, because we do it about once every three to four weeks. I'm not gonna say we do it every week because yeah. I only see them like two to three times a week. Um, so they know that they get an email. They know that their email has the slide number and then the topic that I want them to include. They're not to write their name anywhere on the slide. So I keep that part kind of like hidden. Uh, I change it up every time. Sometimes it's alphabetical order. Sometimes it's reverse alphabetical order. Sometimes it's, I'm just gonna close my eyes and point and I'll do that 26 times. Um, then I have the team directions. So once we have the slide deck complete, this is where I usually say, I'm gonna give you about five minutes to look at everybody's slides. Sometimes it's more depending on how many slides I'm talking about. And then I post the Google form typically in Google Classroom so that everybody can see the form, but only one person needs to fill the form out. 
the joy of distance learning right now is they can all share their screens with each other and yeah. they can kind of look at it together. They can work on it independently, but at the same time, still talk to each other. So they don't have to turn a Google doc in with all the answers, but some of them have been conditioned, I guess I could say, to actually yep. like share that with their small group. Mm -hmm. um, and then they pick the one person who fills out the form. Um, and then, and Brianna, so I'm going to give you a quick variation. What I've done in the past is I don't necessarily want for all kids to do all 38. So one of my variations is the first group that gets any 12 is the winner. And then we break it on Ooh. down. So that way the build time isn't as long because sometimes that can turn into like an hour. And I'm like, you guys, let's finish up. So that's another variation I've done is first team to 12 gets to spin the spinner. And guess what? They're mm. not all going to have the same 12. So just that was one quick variation I was thinking for you. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Now, right now I only have, so like even in a group like my women in history class, which is where this great American race came from, um, I have eight small groups and each group did three. So there's only 24 slides. Yeah. So it's still pretty and they manageable. Had it, yeah. It was very manageable. Um, so this is where the team directions are. No, dad is at water polo. Um, and so I always have a sample slide where I have built this one in advance. And um, <laughs> that's actually okay, a perfect segue. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's ticket. awesome. And Brianna, ticket to quick, ride. I've got a, 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 a shout out from David Prindle, who's in Michigan. He says, now explain the difference between the doc and the form. I, I'm going to go first and you tell me if I'm doing it right. The, 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 the if, David, if you look at the slides that are up there right now, if you look at the slide, the slides are the input where the kids are doing the iron chef part. So, so Brianna might have four facts in a picture and the kids are building the, um, the doc in this case, the slide. The form is where they do this slide 39, three facts, slide 40, three facts, slide 36. And they're putting the answers on the form, which leads to the spreadsheet. Did, am I explaining that in a way that you agree I, with, Brianna? I, yes, I think, I mean, and I think this is where your own sense of personal organization kind of comes right. into play. So I start with a sheet where I have the topic and who's gonna do which slide, which sometimes I need in case somebody's absent that day and I have to fill in the blanks, which happens today. And, and that's part of why I do the first one to 12 because if there's two missing, who cares? Ah, I need See, that so today. It, <laughs> it, it takes those gaps. Now, David teaches, I know that David teaches like, um, uh, Oh, CSI kind of stuff. So David, you could have different types of uh, murder weapons. You could have different types of fingerprint outcomes. And what you're going to do is it's just a, you take your test and reverse engineer it. You put all the questions out into questions on the slides. So it's just reciprocal teaching. It's that simple. The kids simply um, build those slides based on your questions. And then they answer questions on Google form. I'm going to show you, so I'm going to show you one of the sheets where this is okay. how I would, these are the topics that I wanted included. This is if I was doing something on the constitution. So kind of going to what I just heard about like CSI. So I could have like all of the various um, law enforcement the, uh, agencies the, or something like that. The bold words, <laughs> whatever the yes, bold the words bold are. the bold words, exactly. And so this is my background work where I've got this numbered. I've got my topic and then I have a name assigned to each slide. Oh, David, this you was, get 11, just so you know. Yeah, this was a face-to-face -face <laughs> one. Um, and so once I have that, mm -hmm. I then assign the person or the group their slides. Then I come to, I should have done my whole screen because you know, I got a lot of tabs open here. That's okay. Should have had two computers too. We're just going to go entire yeah, screen. Um, While you find that, the, the kids love it when they get an email that has their special word in it. Like 
that mm-hmm. is at least for a, a fifth and sixth grader. Like <laughs> right. that's a new thing for them to get an eat. So that's like, like a do- and that's like a doctopus thing, right? So you can um, literally I use a formula, but yeah, formula. So David, imagine you've got thirty vocab words. You could stand there in front of the room and yell this at the kids all day. This is important. It's going to be on the test. Take notes. Or you can set up a formula. You send every kid two or three vocab words. They explain those vocab words on their uh, Google form and on their slide. And then other kids go to the slide and reverse engineer the answer right back into a Google form. It's kind of an inception lesson. It could have been named inception <laughs> because you start with the list that generates the questions that then end up turning into answers, right? So you, it's backwards and forwards at the same time. Now, Brianna, I have a question for you. Have you ever uh-huh. used it at the beginning of a unit and then used what the kids came up with to be the launching point for like any lecture type things that you're going to do rather than, yes. okay, how did that work? Well, technically what I did today would have been like the beginning of a unit on expansion and democracy in the 1800s. So every topic is something that we're going to actually look into in a lot more detail over the next two weeks. Okay. Um, cool. My women in history class is actually doing a great American race tomorrow on women in the civil rights movement. So they're going to have to do a little bit more of a deep dive because these aren't, I'm not including like the women who are in the history books. They've got to actually like dive a little bit deeper to find them. Cool. So it's not just all Susan B. Anthony. Uh, well, that would be my, the one I was showing you originally of this actually might be Susan B. No, this is uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, but. um, The other thing I think it's neat about this approach. And I think Kim was saying this too, which is you don't have to teach for two weeks to do an America, a great American race. You can do a great American race to set the hook. So the, the fact that the kids don't know that much at the beginning is totally fine. And then the other piece is, Brianna, you've you've clearly got uh, several different schemas going on for this. And Kim and I threw you some curveballs, but w- is it fair to say that by the time you run three or four of these, it's it's a pretty quick setup? Oh yeah, because um, I kind of created I created a slides template of sorts where I already have all the numbers on top, and I just leave it as a blank slide, and I just push that out. I just make a copy. Um, the thing that takes me a little bit of time is the Google form because I like to make sure they can spell Marbury versus Madison or they can spell Claudette Colvin. Hopefully oh, that's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah. I get that. So, you know, I want them <laughs> to spell those names correctly, which is, you know, kind of important. So doing the answer key on a Google form is probably what takes me the most time. But the reason I have it as a sheet in the beginning is then I can just copy and paste. Okay. Very cool. Well, thank you for sharing the great American race. Um, and I love the adaptations you've made because I did my first great American race last February or so. And it literally, uh, I had to email Marlena and I was like, okay, how does this really work? Like it was a real <laughs> mind bender at first, but she's like, I, I had to do that many times. Every kid and gets I one still card. Couldn't figure it out. Every kid gets one card with, as many facts as you want, that card turns into a slide and then each group goes backwards and turns their slides back into cards in a, in a Google form. And I was like, Oh, when you explain it, I was like, yeah, so easy. So I've really liked seeing what you're doing in a distance learning because the card was always super important, but what, but when you use the spreadsheet, um, it gives you, um, that leeway and flexibility for distance learning. So that's really, really cool. Yep. It actually took my former student teacher, I was telling Kim, took my former student teacher to explain it to me in like an easy to understand format and how to use all my Google tools to be like, oh, that's all I had to do. Yeah. I think it's a good example though. We are, we are always telling kids, just try it. It'll be fine. Go ahead and write all five paragraphs. You'll live. You will live. (laughs) Your fingers will not fall off. And I think that lesson's true for us too. Like it's very comfortable to just lecture and hand out a worksheet. But when you do things like this, you're engaging kids at, at, at a different level. You're adding to your skill set as an educator. And it opens up all these new permutations. It's no different than saying, Well, I think I will try the debate team, even though I'm shy, right? And it's it's a teacher version of doing that. Kim, uh, is it for plus one? 
It is time for plus one. You gonna go first? Uh, yes. Do we have to plus one a great American race, or can we plus one anything? Well, I mean, it's it's your show. It's our show. You can do whatever you want. Well, I will. I will plus. I'm gonna. I've already. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is restate my plus ones because I had a couple of epiphanies through the show. So, Great American Race. If you have the book or you've done the sample, consider my plus ones would be um, that Brianna's got this great pivot of the things are in a spreadsheet instead of on a card, and that means we can do it remotely. And then my plus one for Brianna would be make it the race more racy, which is. Uh, no, we're keeping our clothes on. Not that. Um, uh, but make the race more of a race by saying first group that has 12 facts, first group that has 15 facts. You don't necessarily have to do all the facts. And then um, you could play another round the next day and take some off the board. So that's Ooh. my plus one. Because what I always worry about, especially in distance learning, is me sitting there quietly while the kids do all 38. That's what I worry about. Although I know Brianna, you engage your kids at a high level. So that would be my plus one is, you know, and you could even have a spinner. How many today? We're going to do eight, 10, 12, 15 mm -hmm. today. And then I would be watching that spreadsheet and announcing group four is up to nine, group five is up to 10. How are we going to do? And, um, and really, if you got groups of four, Brianna, that means each kid has a new four. Mm -hmm. So it, it's pretty manageable. And so that's my plus one. What about you, Kim? Um, my, well, my plus one, I already kind of mentioned is yeah. just using formula to send out the words to kids or whatever, um, add on works for you. But I think it's kind of adds that layer of mystery, um, to the, Ooh, I'm getting my word and they get excited. Like I would, I kind of did a teaser, like on Monday morning at eight o'clock, your word will arrive to your inbox. And so that they had it ready because they had to have their slide ready before the distance learning started. So they weren't working on them with me. They had it done before we got to group. So that kind of was some fun stuff too. So I think that's yeah, and, and it for formula, form ranger, doctopus, they're all relatively easy to, to work. It's basically just a mail merge. Yeah. So, um, but there's that little button on your Google that's, that nobody looks at, which is send later. Oh, I love schedule send. Schedule send. Schedule send. And a lot of people don't even realize that's there. So um, so imagine having a scheduled send. The next question drops in four minutes. And um, David, let it go. It, David's saying it's almost like the old password show. I was yeah. also thinking it's almost like the game Taboo. I don't know if you've ever played that mm -hmm. where it's like a vocabulary mm -hmm. game, but you can't say these words that are related to it. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like that. I always wanted to make yeah. Taboo for the classroom because that's just like – such the perfect way to um to read and that's one more subtlety that i almost screwed up when i did my first grade american races it's important that the kids relate the information but it can't specifically state it right. so if you put a picture of susan b anthony it can't say susan b anthony if you put a picture of william harrison taft you can't it can't say that in there so the kids are 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 really playing that password show just like david said and, and and so then um, they have to figure things out from that, which is, uh, is off the charts on the Bloom's levels. All right. And uh, is it time for me to end with our quote of the day? I believe it is. What is our quote of the day? Our quote Brianna of the day Rox, was, we already had that one. Uh, no, it is. Uh, kind of goes back to this idea of uh, community. Without a sense of caring, there can be no sense of community. So we've got some people who are upset that school is closed again tomorrow. They're very vocal on your social media saying like, well, we've got remote learning. Why can't the teachers teach? Well, some of the teachers are evacuated and some of the families are evacuated and we're not learning right now. It's a, it's a time where we need to take a break and take care of our community. So it's okay. We're learning. We're going to be okay. <laughs> so have that sense of community and take care of your fellow people. What a great place to end. Brianna, any last thoughts yeah. before we wrap this one up? Uh, no, this was a lot more fun and a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I must, <laughs> we'll let you I come must on tell again, a lie. <laughs> we will let you come on again. Oh, yay. yay. I'm, I'll, I'll throw in one last freebie from Kim this week. Um, I'm going to plus one out of category. Um, so, Brianna, you've seen 10 slides, right? 
Mm-hmm. So if if you like the Great American Race, but it seems scary, not to you, but you know another person, <laughs> um, Kim did a Thin Slides. Oh yeah, my Thin Slides study guide. Thin Slides study I did guide. That. I did that too. And David, you'll love this too. Every kid it? gets every kid Can gets I one think? word, and they have to put the definition and one picture. They get five minutes. Go. And we've already done the work, so they they should have some schema for it. And imagine a study guide getting cranked out in five minutes. Yeah. Boom. That's so awesome. I, I did that. I did so if that. somebody if somebody thinks the Great American Race sounds fun, but they're just getting started on protocols, there's there's your uh, your steering your uh, I was going to say steering wheel training wheels is just do a thin <laughs> slide study guide. You guys have five minutes. I've given you all word on the slides. Get in there and go go go. All right, that, awesome. That Thanks awesome. everyone for joining us. We and John they, said we were all. Thanks for show. jumping in. John said we were going to do our show in fifteen minutes, and we've doubled that. Uh, we've gone thirty, which is cool because it's all good. Well, it's the most oh, sophisticated good. one, and and it's Brianna, so that's just how we got to roll tonight. I'm kind of sophisticated like that. You are. I've always thought of sophistication <laughs> and Brianna yeah. going right together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not all the time. Not all the time. <laughs> so Brianna, thank you. You were setting the record for our longest show ever. Wow. And uh, yes, that's that's a super pinky up is what it is. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to shut this thing down. Brianna, we're going to have you back in a few weeks. So think of another one you want to share with us. And David okay. Pringle and Deanna, shout out to Deanna. Look, I'm giving Deanna a little shout out here. What, what? You're welcome, Ooh. Deanna. And David, we'll see you back. Share it with all your friends. This gets shared to uh, YouTube and uh, it'll be available for watching later on Facebook. And then we share it all over the internets. Good, Good night, so my mom can watch. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Your mom's going to be very <laughs> impressed with how you grew up. I hope so. I hope Thanks, so. everybody.